Welcome to Wednesday Be Well community. Today is Wednesday, March 3rd, 2021. We are in week 49 of our Be Well community. We have long awaited our segment of today. Dr. Karen Shipley recommended many months ago, it feels like now, to welcome the one and only David Joy Gauss into our Be Well community. Today, David is here leading us in the conversation, taking care of our, our hearts. I'm just already applying it to myself. Taking care of our hearts in times of grief and chaos. And my goodness, have we not experienced grief and chaos unique to each of us and collectively over the past 49 weeks. So song of the day, hello, my old heart. Please do your, your heart some good, uh, your mindfulness practice some good, and take a listen to this song, um, hopefully after our segment here today. I think Lexi might give us a bit of an intro here. Yes, I just wanted to hop back in here and remind you of our self-care challenges. Remember that your February self-care challenge is due by Friday to the Be Well community email at burlcenter.com. If you turn those in, then you get your very own miniature coloring book prize. We also are offering our March self-care challenge that you see right here on the screen for our Burl staff members. Those were sent out yesterday through email. Um, for our Facebook followers, we will post that later today if you would like to join in. Um, our theme for March is Be Well in Bloom to reset and renew as spring is coming. So we are excited for all of your self-care adventures to continue. I see Dr. Sarah Wilson here, who is going to lead us in our Rate the Weight. Hello, Dr. Wilson. Hello, Dr. Farnan, and welcome, everyone. Um, let's take a moment, as we do every day when we connect in the Be Well community, to pause, get out of autopilot, and really tune in to what's happening inside of ourselves, what we're experiencing, what we're feeling, and how heavy that might be. With Rate the Weight, this is a subjective units of distress scale. We're really just measuring how much stress we might be feeling in the present moment from zero to five. There aren't any right or wrong answers this, or, or good or bad answers. And we do this as best as we can without judgment, just observing and noticing what might be happening. So if you would, let's take a deep breath and really settle into our bodies. Kind of do an internal scan or inventory and ask yourself what you might be feeling, where you might be feeling it in your body, and how heavy or how intense that might be. And do your best to put a number to it from zero to five. And if you're comfortable sharing your ratings, please feel free to enter them into the chat on Zoom or comments on Facebook. And hang on to this. This is an activity that we can be doing throughout the day. Our ratings naturally fluctuate and we want to experience a variety, a range of emotions. And, and the more we check in with ourselves, the better able we are to understand what, where we are, what we're feeling, and then what we need. So this practice can help to inform us about what would be helpful um, as, we're, as we're working to manage that weight. So whether it's a self-care activity, uh, reaching out to our social supports and those people who are regulating, or even reaching out for professional services, if that would be helpful. So as you guys are already doing, let's pause, breathe, and rate the weight. All right, I'm gonna hop in as people are offering up their ratings. Um, hello, everyone. And thank you, Dr. Wilson, as always, for guiding us in pausing and noticing where we're at. I have the privilege and pleasure to introduce um, our spotlighted guest, um, David Joy, who is um, has become a beautiful and dear friend um, over the years. Um, who is an incredibly talented human and gifted uh, psychotherapist um, who practices in Atlanta and has for about over 30 years, I think, David Joy, um, who specializes in experiential um, therapy um, and provides lots of uh, variations and different trainings um, 
of her gifts, um, and which I'm sure David will speak a little bit more to today. Um, however, I think this is um, this couldn't be a more necessary and needed time for us to connect um, in all the ways to tend to our hearts. And I am just grateful. Um, we will be providing um, all the resources on how to contact Deva and the work that she has offered to many communities, um, including uh, the trainings that I have taken. So much gratitude. And for mindfulness today, Deva will be um, guiding us in some uh, experiential body work um, and how we can be mindful and tend to our hearts. So Deva, thank you, thank you. And I think thank you, Karen. I saw a quote of the day. I saw a beautiful quote and then it went away. So I think, uh, okay, Lexi, you're amazing. So thank you again, Deva. Welcome to our Be Well community. Such a gift to have you. Thank you, thank you. I am so glad to be with you all. This, your Be Well community is amazing. I'm so moved by it and I'm so glad to be part of it. Uh, today. And today, uh, Dr. Shibley, like said, like, what would you like to talk about? So I came up with this title of um, caring for the heart in times of grief and chaos, which have been heightened over the last four and a half years, many ways collectively, um, but is always with us. And uh, little did I know that a dear friend of mine would uh, die just a few days ago unexpectedly, and I would be completely in the midst of this theme. So that is how that unfolds. And that is really how applicable this theme is because life is an unfoldment of, of connection, love, and losses since life is impermanent. So this taking care of our hearts, being in relationship with our hearts is really what's happening all the time and is what's really coloring our whole quality of living um, at all times. So uh, Dr. Shibley often refers to me as an expert in grief. And I just wanna say like, no one wants to be an expert in grief. Um, <laughs> but on the other hand, I think that anyone who experiences losses and uh, keeps showing up in life is has expertise. We all have an expertise and a story about that to share. So I first want you all to think about um, a time that you first experienced grief. When in your life you first got introduced to grief. And that might take you back, of course, to childhood. I know for myself, um, I got introduced to grief through some very common ways like fish. Having a fish as a child is a direct avenue into impermanence. Um, who can relate to that? I know that my great niece just called me uh, last week. I got a fish and the next day she called me. It died. And so that was one of my first introductions um, as well as bird, dogs, cats, grandparents. These are all things I think that we are all have been living through. For myself, um, I was introduced to grief in a different way as a kid. When I was 14, I couldn't move my arms and I couldn't walk. And I was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis at that time, which brought me to another level of grief, which was grieving movement, first of all, and just playing with my friends and having a normal childhood and my identity so far up to that point. And that is one thing that happens with loss of any kind, which is that we not only grieve who and what we're, we've been losing, but also ourselves and who we've been up to that moment. So our hearts carry all of it. Our hearts carry all the losses and one loss brings up all losses and our hearts carry all the love, the connection. Uh, so I want to just bring in for everyone for a moment to have reverence for your own heart, for everything that it feels and all the attachments we have, all the feelings, all the heartaches and all the cracks where the light comes in. So our hearts are amazing. So, and we sit with uh, our clients and in heart connections. 
So I just want to make a few points first about grief that I'm really talking to your minds right now because the mind is what judges. So number one, never make your heart wrong. Bottom line, it always deserves respect, tenderness, compassion, acceptance, permission giving. If we just need to be in a consistent process of giving permission to whatever arises in our hearts. I like to think of um, the metaphor of being sky, being the sky and that our feelings are like clouds and clouds are always changing. They arise, they form, they, they change and they dissolve and they move around. And truly like the metaphor of cloud formations is perfect for our feelings because clouds are made of water and dust and water is our, are our feelings that that is the element to the feeling body and dust is made of solid particles of form which just comes from being in a body there is dust matter of fact i found fascinating to learn that 50 percent of the dust in your house is from dead skin cells just just a, just an awareness about that um so we have heart dust and if you could think of the feelings that are moving through you as these cloud formations and being as vast as the sky and, and spacious, and that takes breathing and that takes really spending time with your heart and whatever you're feeling. Um, you can't contract for feelings, only behaviors. So I tell my couples this, who I work with in couples therapy all the time, you cannot contract for feelings only behaviors. It's also completely true with yourself, with your own heart. You cannot expect your heart to feel a certain way at any certain time as much as we would like to. It doesn't work that way. So grief is not linear. And, you know, if there's an affirmation that goes, um, each and every day, I feel better and better. Well, if you think you could apply that to grief, you are in trouble because grief does not work that way whatsoever. It, it just spirals and it goes in waves. And I call it like the front burner and the back burner. And once initiated into a grief or anyone that we love is initiated into grief, it's always there. It's always inside and it could get triggered at any time coming into the front burner and then we can't stay always in that front burner grief. It does go back on the back burner because our nervous systems can't even handle that, but it's always there. And um, so that's, that's something that we need to just really honor and bring acceptance to. Uh, I had this client who was grieving and she came in and she said, wow, I had a better week this week. And I'm like, what's that mean to you? And she said, I didn't cry. And I'm like, oh, well, that sounds like the next week or the following week when you cry a lot, you're going to think it's a worse week. So maybe we can release all judgment about the grieving process and see all of it as grief, as however it shows up, whether we're numb or we're crying. So it's so important not to assign meaning or judgment or right or wrong that are worse to the grieving process. So um, I, I'm sure I want you all as I'm talking to reflect into your own experience with grieving. Um, I know that when I was grieving my mom, uh, which I'm still grieving my mom, of course, um, but when I would, people would ask, how are you? And I would just say grieving, because that word covers it all. That word covers the ins and outs, the back burner, the front burner. And it's so important at times intentionally to bring grief into the front burner to spend intentional time with grief. And I recommend to do this myself with journals. I have quite a few journals called Conversations with Mom, Conversations with Dad, and now my friend Conversations with Elfie. And it's a time to dialogue or to take walks with the loved ones that you miss. So that's that's a Number one thing, spending time with your heart when in grief, because a lot of people will try to avoid. 
So one thing that I say is that once we're initiated into grief, we are rearranged, never the same. And that is actually the name of my book, Rearranged, Never the Same, The Nature of Grief. And I call it that because it is just so true. It's just completely what it is. And with grief, it's so important to understand that it's not like, let me get through it to the other side. That's not how grief works. Grief is a process of surrendering into it and including it as part of who we are. And I, I know that when I was grieving my mom, I fell in love with the word whole, W-H-O-L-E. Because for the first time, I like really saw that it includes the word whole, H-O-L-E, in it. And that is how it is. We have these holes and these griefs and these longings, and they need to be integrated and be part of and not to be expected to, to get past it. I was thinking about a client that I had and um, things were rough in her life and she was um, crying and she was self-soothing herself by saying, things will get better, things will get better. And I blurted out, and worse, don't worry, we did get through that therapeutic moment. And I said that because it's so true. Like, yes, things will get better. And everything is impermanent. So things do get worse. We have these losses and that's inevitable. So if we have our sense of self dependent on things getting better, if our sense of okayness or being intact is like, oh, it will get better, out there, the life circumstances, then we're setting ourselves up for falling. So I think it's just so important that the key is really spending time, having a relationship with the heart, which in knowing in a lot of psychotherapy is expanding our tools and our abilities to be able to be present and attend to our hearts. So as we cultivate this relationship with our hearts, as we're in right relationship with our hearts, no matter what um, the life circumstances are, you can think of like being like a, a loving, positive parent to your heart. And so like a loving parent, we give permission to our hearts to feel whatever they feel. So just try that on, giving permission to your heart, to whatever it feels. We bring compassion, just like a parent to a child. You bring compassion to your child who's crying. We bring compassion to our hearts, to ourselves, no matter what we are feeling. And we bring love and we do good things uh, for ourselves as we feel whatever we feel, like that taking care of ourselves no matter what. And we intentionally bring in positive energy to help our hearts remember the love, like the connections, being with people who feel safe, soothing, being with nature, whatever it is, bringing in that positive energy and perhaps reminding ourselves that love never dies. So I just want you to think about your heart for a moment and your own relationship with your heart. And every day, you know, there's just so many expansions and contractions that our hearts experience. I mean, you might glance at your phone and bam, there will be news or social media that might just ah, make your heart just hurt to like just see certain news of things that are going on on the planet. And then the next moment, your friend or your family member walks into the room, you're like, ah, hi. And then the very next moment, you're sitting with a client and you're talking to a client and you're like, oh my gosh, that's, oh, it's painful. And then the de next moment, your dog licks your face and you're like, ah. So like, this is a constant ride. Our hearts are just constantly expanding, contracting um, in response to what is happening inside of ourselves and outside of ourselves. So I just wanna like share in the reverence of how amazing our hearts are. I'm not just talking about the organ in our heart, but energetically, like how much our hearts uh, navigate and feel and, you know, we brush our teeth every day. So how important 
is it to also attend to our hearts very deliberately like we do our teeth every single day. And when we're grieving, we need special attention. We need longer and deeper attention. So I want you to think about what you do every single day or what you do just in your life in general to take care of your heart. And you might wanna share that. Um, I know you guys do this sharing thing. So you might wanna just write some ideas in of what you do. And everyone does, you know, some people like love yoga and meditation and journaling and taking walks and other people will clean and cook. And so how do you take care of your heart? And how do you self-soothe? And you might not even think of yourself soothing as taking care of your heart, but it is. It's, um, so just take a moment and be with that. So you, you see that there's some sharings. And as that's happening, I want you to also think about taking your heart in three different, taking care of your heart in three different phases. And often just whatever we do, whether it's go do a hike or we sit by a tree or we cuddle with our animals, all three of these phases are taking place at the same time. But I really like to break it down so that you can really think about these different ways of attending. So the first phase is cleansing and purification. So once again, our hearts are absorbing so much all the time. So do we take time to weep? Do we take time to have a rainstorm and clean out our heart? And there's nourishing and replenishing, taking in, taking in so that we feel restored, which is the restoration and lifting. So let's go through that just a little bit slower. I'm gonna just introduce a few energy medicine uh, exercises that you could do with each one, just sitting here. Cleansing and purification. So working with just like feathering, um, I'm assuming that everyone could see me. Is that right, Karen? Like, so you're you're moving your hands, like you're brushing your your chest. So you're cleansing and breathe. So do it with me. Do it with me, everyone. So cleansing. This is an energy medicine thing you could do your whole body, actually. But right now we're just focusing in on the heart area. So breathe and make a sound with your exhale. Ah, nourishing, nourishing and replenishing. So just bring your hands to your heart. And we're talking about like the energy center of your heart. This is called your heart chakra, it's right in the center. And just be with your heart and you, you might want to rub it or you might want to rock a little bit rocking the heart to just see what comes for yourself. Close your eyes for a moment and just breathe nourishing, nourishing energy into your heart. And lifting. So lifting naturally happens just by bringing our arms all the way up and looking up a bit and see what happens with your own heart. Breathe into that lifting and restoring. And restoring, bring one hand to your heart and the other palm facing out in front of you. And this is a natural restoration posture because you're nurturing and at the same time giving and receiving the connectivity is natural for the heart. So just breathe into this posture and see how that feels to you. So ways to attend, consciously, mindfully attending to your heart in honor of all that your heart carries and breathes through, thanking your heart. 
So in a moment, we're going to be moving into some energy medicine work. And I love, I'm an addict to energy medicine work. And I try to do at least five minutes of it a day. Um, just like brushing the teeth, let's take care of the energy bodies. And uh, for holistic practitioners, we know that we're not just the physical body, but that we are also, we, we have this auric field and which by the way, needs cleansing and nurturing and lifting. And so we have the etheric um, body, we have the emotional body, the mental body, the spirit body, and it's all here. And when we do these energy medicine exercises, which are physical, it has a way of permeating into these other energy fields. Um, there's so much to learn about that. And some of these exercises are from uh, the known Donna Eden, who brought energy medicine to many of us Americans. Um, and some of these I made up. Um, so <laughs> they work. So let's do this. I, instead of using a lot of words for it, I'd rather you just experience this. So um, let's stand up. And so everyone find your position so that you could see me, but you could also stand. So when you first stand, let's just pause for a moment. And I invite you to breathe. And to just, we're going to, again, rate your stress level. So on a scale from one to 10, 10 being most stressful, just close your eyes and see what number arises for you to describe your level of stress at this very moment. Okay, so now let's just put that aside and we're just going to experience some things and then we'll tap back to see where we're at. So the first thing we're gonna do is so easy. We keep our feet rooted into the ground at shoulder length apart and you begin to just let your body shake. Ah, and as you shake, allow some sound. Okay, you're, no one's hearing you. Go for it, be shameless. Ah, ah, ah. Let it just shake. So what happens when animals in the wild get away from the predator, the very first thing they do is shake to balance out their nervous system again. So ah, we should be shaking every day because there's so much stuff that comes out of now bring your arms out in front of you. Ha, ha, ha. Make some sound. Open your mouth. Ha, ha. And shake. Bring your arms over your head. Look up. Look up. Ha, ha, ha. And back to the earth. And let it all drop down, down to the earth. Ha. Your feet rooted into the ground. And just stop for a moment. And just tune in. Did you have fun in that? And just tune in, or is your body tingling at all? So this is a great thing when we practice it in our energy medicine workshop conferences, we do it like for 20 minutes straight. So just even doing it for 30 seconds, notice what happens. Next, we're gonna do what's called cross lateral. So ha, ha, just kinda ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha. So this is like crawling. This is excellent for the brain. It helps to balance out the brain. And no matter what you're feeling, grief or joy, you could be doing this and helping your body get more balance. Ha, make a sound, be shameless. Ha, the body loves to sound out because it carries so many sounds. Ha, 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 ha. Okay, and just hold for a moment. Take a breath, close your eyes. See what that's like. Okay, we're gonna do, it's called breath of joy. You bring your feet together. Well, I'm gonna do this slowly with you, do it with me, and then we'll do it quicker. So you go inhaling, 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 exhaling, ha! Inhaling, 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 ha. Inhaling, 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 let it fly, ha. Inhaling, 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 ha. 
Are you doing it? Go with it. See what kind of ride you could go on with this. Ha. One more time. And now roll all the way up and hold up. Your eyes are closed. This is called vertical alignments. Imagine energy from above going all the way through your body into the earth. Imagine yourself as a tree. Your arms are like tree branches. Your torso, the trunk. Soles of feet rooting into the center of the earth. Deep breathing. Slowly lower the arms down, but still imagine them up. Ground the energy by bringing your palms of your hands to your thighs. This is a grounding. And now open your palms and see what happens to your heart. Bring one hand to your heart, one hand to your, what's called the Hara Center in yoga, it's right beneath your belly button, the central place in your body. Close your eyes and breathe. And just rate your body now. So see where you are now, see what number comes to you with stress. Okay, let's slowly come down, sitting again. So that's just a little taste of just a few of the zillion energy medicine things that you could do, but just notice what, how you're sitting with yourself. If you feel longer, if you feel clearer, if you can allow yourself to feel more lifted, nurtured. So we are going to um, move into a guided imagery. And uh, so in this guided imagery, we're gonna be experimenting with sounds. So I once again want to invite you to be shameless and to experience these sounds and just see what happens, experiment with them. And we're going to also be visualizing colors. And if you're not visual, that's fine. You can just think the color. And these sounds actually do different things to our bodies. Um, they work with our endocrine system, our blood pressure, organs. There is so much science to it that I won't be going into today, but um, what's most important is for you to experiment with it. But another reason why I love to use sound versus words is that you can't, um, have mental gymnastics with sound. They just are. Versus an affirmation that you might tell yourself, like, I really am okay. Everything's okay. And then the other part of the mind goes, no, it's not. It's not okay. This is not okay. It is okay. It's okay. Everything's okay. Everything's okay. It's not okay. So hmm, English words, whatever, maybe not. So we're going to, you know, sounds do things to our energy bodies and just calms the mind. So close your eyes. And notice what happens as you shift your awareness to closing your eyes. Notice your breath. Allow yourself to hear your breath. As you inhale, deep and long, fill with breath and hold it for a moment. moment. This is called prana, a yoga term that means life energy, allowing your upper lungs to fill with this prana and then with the exhale, long and deep and full, just surrendering and writing that exhale out. Again, a deep inhale and hear the sound of your breath through your throat. And full exhale, allowing compassion to your heart. And before we embark, thank your heart. 
thank your heart. Honor your heart for being so resilient, for caring so much, for loving so much, for being willing and open. Breathing. And again, deep inhale. And this time with the exhale, allow the sound, ah. Deep inhale, ah. So continue to do that as I talk with you about it. So you're inhaling and you're exhaling, ah. That ah is emptying you. It actually, that ah is connected to your thymus and your heart chakra, your heart energy center. And allow the color of violet to permeate your heart as you do this. Violet is the color of the amethyst. It's the color of transmutation, transforming dark into light. Allow violet light to gather all the dust particles, all the heart dust, anything you don't need. And with that exhale, allow that, ah. I should be seeing open mouths on everyone. So, ah, write it out. I'm gonna trust that you're doing this so that you can experience the power of, ah. Just do it one more time. Ah. And now move your jaw around. Oh, we collect a lot of stress in the jaw. And as you move it, allow some sounds. Just move it around. And now deep inhale. And with the exhale, allow the sound. I love the sound, you know, the sound, I believe changes one's biochemistry. The sound is ancient. The sound is the sound mothers rocking your babies throughout the eon. So allow it again, keep doing this. Your deep inhale. Dropping down into your heart and channeling the prana. Continue to do this over and over as I speak to you. And as you do this, allow the color of spring green to be in your mind's eye and channel it into your heart with the shh. This is the color of the heart energy center, this green, healing green, so channel green and continue. Shh. Keep bathing in green and thank your heart for being all that your heart is. Bring gratitude. Take in your touch and bring your hands holding your heart. So we're nourishing your heart just like a good loving parent would with a child, allowing for replenishing, staying in the green, allowing the sound, shh, and listening, listening to your heart. As part of nourishing your heart is listening, listening, giving permission. And now with your next inhale, I want you to experiment with the sound, mmm. Let's do that again. Feel it vibrating in your body. Mm. One more time. Mm. And then slowly rest your hands down on your thighs and shifting to lifting and restoring as you deeply breathe. And just be quiet for a moment with yourself inside, with your breath. Your heart is sacred. 
So we're bringing homage to the heart, breathing deep and long into the heart. We're gonna utilize the sound om for lifting and restoration. So we will call upon the color gold, which is this divine vibration to permeate and surround your heart with gold as you chant OM over and over. And just imagine all of us chanting together this OM. So you're not alone in any way, which is a very important part of taking care of our hearts is knowing we're not alone, even though we might feel so alone. We're all in this together. So taking a deep inhale. Oh. Do this together. You should be seeing your mouth open and moving. Deep inhale. Oh. Visualize gold. Deep inhale. Oh. Let's do it one more time. So really do it. Be as shameless as you can with it. Be in the gold. Deep inhale. Oh. Now bring it inside. And just keep your eyes closed. Continue that sound inside with the gold. And really sincerely take a moment here to really thank your heart and bring a message of loving kindness and honor to your heart. And make a commitment to your heart to pay attention, to attend. Your message might sound something like, I love you, my heart. Just try that on inside. I love you, my heart. Thank you for being my connection to all of life. Just take a moment to thank your heart in this way. You heart, you hurt at times, you cry, you blaze with love, you persist. You are my portal for reverence for all of life. Connection, interconnection, love. You are strong, resilient, vast. You have no boundaries to what you can feel, what you can heal, what you can love. You permeate my being with the wisdom of the ancient ones and the power of endless love. You are the carrier and knower of all. All that happens, past, present, future. You are one with all beings. Salutations to you, my heart, you are sacred. Now allow your own message. I'm gonna be quiet for a moment so that you have your own experience with your heart. Allow your breath to be full and deep. Now shield your heart with silver, the color of protection. Silver allows love to come in and out, but is a very strong conduit of protection. To just breathe silver into your heart as part of the loving guardianship with your heart. And take a deep inhale again. And a full exhale, ah. Uh, and open your eyes. And just pay attention now to see how you're feeling and where you are with yourselves. And I'm just gonna pause and send it back to you all. And maybe there could be a share, sharings about how we do attend to our hearts, what our relationship is with our hearts um, and strengthening in that.
I don't know who wants to go first here and just sharing what this was like and tending to our intentionally tending to our hearts today. David Joy, I can honestly say that I have not experienced a, an experience in caring for my heart quite like you lead it. Dr. Shipley told me we would be in good hands and my heart felt in really amazing hands today. And I don't know that I have better words to, to say that uh, right now. I'm going to work to organize my thoughts a little bit because I think I was just in my feeling spaces for, for a while being just letting you lead my heart. And that was much needed and awesome. I'm thankful. I'm going to be quiet for a second. Join in folks. Let's use, let's uh, allow your voices to be heard too with, with our pro in our midst, David Joy. I feel way more relaxed after that exercise. And I liked uh, telling my heart that I loved my heart and it felt way easier to tell my heart that I loved it to turn that into self-affirmation and make me feel better about myself afterwards as well. Well, I'll jump in as well. And I know I'm completely biased. And I think that um, one of the, the pieces, David, that I love so much is, is how authentically you practice these these beliefs, these the the ways in which you kind of have reference for um, all of it, not just the good pieces of joy or love that we have, but rather like all of the heartache that comes along with that love, and um, and how you can hold space for both of that and speak to it. And then the use of sound and movement is not something that we tap into, I think, enough. Um, it, you know, and, and how um, we are able to practice that in small spaces, in private spaces, in small times, um, and have a shift, um, you know, versus that I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. <laughs> no, I'm not, you know, that like there's, you know, so those pathways, I, I'm, I'm so grateful for you in this life, but grateful that you bring um, different avenues that may, people may resonate with, may not, and that's okay. But what the Be Well community hopes to always offer are choices and ideas and pathways. And for us, to have reverence for that expanding and contracting heart of ours, um, I love that. So I'm um, so much gratitude. So I, I want to share this uh, here with our Be Well community. David, as you were first starting to teach and educate and this kind of new way, one of our uh, viewers here on Facebook with us, one of our beloved Be Well members here, Michelle says, something I am not mindful of practicing. This is not something that they had previously been mindful of practicing is tending to our heart. And that speaks to me, Michelle, as Deva started talking, I was bubbling over with emotion, but not really understanding why. And David, you're just like shaking your head. I'm certain this is like common for you, the way that you lead. But I was feeling, I was feeling all these things that I wasn't necessarily aware of and I didn't even care. I just needed to let it go. David, I don't know if there's anything that you would want uh, to say to that, but I just noticed it and I wanted to, I needed to share that here with, with our community. Well, first of all, I love that you just share that and it's just so authentic. And I think it's what happens when we do pay attention and we just go inward or we journal, let our hearts journal or we breathe into our hearts intentionally. And once again, it's like those cloud formations. Like when you were talking, I was thinking about the cloud formations of like, and why even bring the mind into it? You know, like we don't need to understand because we're feeling so deeply so continuously and um, we're in touch also we're interconnected so it's not just our own experience we're like on a deep level like we're like the aspen trees right we're all like on the roots are all connected with the aspen trees and i think of ourselves that way and so it's too hard to even understand what it's all about but to feel it and to bring attention i think if we don't feel it we get constipated in various ways, you know, whether it's physically or emotionally, or we are just walking around robotically and doing what we need to do. But there's so much more richness and it's that willingness to feel it 
And it is the spectrum, right? Like, so we're going to feel the joy and the connectivity, but we're also going to feel the heart ache. And it's that willingness, I think. Karen, do you remember, and, and we've got some amazing comments that we'll get to, and I know we're close on time here and over time uh, with you, David, but Karen, do you remember early, I don't know, halfway through this pandemic, and we were talking about, uh, Karen has led us in amazing mindfulness meditation every single day. Do you remember me sharing that every time you ask us to tune into our body, it's my heart that hurts? That came back to mind today, too, and that felt freeing when that emotion came of just like, that's why my heart hurts and I don't have the language for that and and I don't need to have the language for that yeah you don't need to <laughs> okay some more comments here and then we will wind our time down today Lexi do you mind to share the ways that we can connect with Deva the books that Deva has written and that are available to us um, Dr. Wilson says, yes, Shelly, what an amazing experience, David Joy. Michelle, mm -hmm. it will definitely take some practicing this. Agreed, Michelle. Anna said, I love visualizing heart protecting silver in spring rain green healing. Mm -hmm. Michelle says, yes, me too. David, these are a couple of two of the books or two ways that we could hear more, learn more, connect more with you. Yes. Yes, and the rearranged book is in audio now too. So if people prefer that way. And that book is really good for when there is raw grief. Um, it's not just about um, grieving. It's also about connecting and staying connected with those we lose. Lose. Quote unquote. I can't wait. Yeah, I can't wait. I'm, I'm eager to get both of, both of these now. And then it looks like we have ways to find more of you, Deva. That's true. <laughs> yes, my one and only song. <laughs> so far, I mean, today's a new day, tomorrow's a new day. <laughs> yes, that was just a birthing thing. But yes, I, if, it, um, if it could serve anyone, I love it, pass it on. So that's what it's there for. And also on my website, uh, under psychotherapy, uh, there's a lot of videos. There's about 36 videos on the healing energy medicine or exercises. So it's one to three minute videos and people could participate with those in that way. What a healer, Be Well community. Dr. Karen Shipley, thank you again for always connecting us with amazing leaders. I loved how you uh, verbalize that today, that our intention in the Be Well community is to bring all types of healing to life and elevating that it is not one size fits all for healing, for grieving. David Joy, I don't, I don't have the words for you either. Just all, all my love, my heart is feeling it here today. We cannot thank you enough. Thank for being you, well everyone. In the Be Well I I love being with everyone. <laughs> we're thinking of you in your time of grief. That was also on my heart and mind as we were practicing with you today. Just awesome. And I don't mean awesome in a lighthearted way, just overwhelmingly awesome. Be well community. Thank you for taking care of yourselves, for tending to your heart through all the grief and chaos that we've been navigating. We will look forward to being right back here with you live on Friday and tomorrow. We will have more tips and tools. Be well, everyone. <laughs>